California Institute of Technology is the home of Project Mathematics, which began producing modules on basic topics in high school mathematics in 1989. Each module consists of a computer animated videotape together with a workbook. The videotapes emphasize visual aspects of mathematics by using motion, color, and sound as an extension of the chalkboard. Live action relates mathematics to real life. Images from original documents help place topics in historical and cultural perspective. Each program is divided into bite-sized segments, labeled with slates like this one. These slates tie the video to the corresponding section in the workbook and encourage interaction between students and teachers. On its fifth anniversary, Project Mathematics conducted a contest for teachers who had used project materials in their classroom. Entries were judged for innovative use of these materials. Through the generosity of the Hewlett Packard Company and the Intel Foundation, five $1,000 first place awards and three $500 second place awards went to teachers with matching grants to each of their schools. The first place winners listed in alphabetical order are Suzanne Jacobson from Jericho Middle School on Long Island in New York, Tom Janssens and Sandy Lofstock from California Lutheran University in Thousand Oaks, California, Edna Mangaldan and Alicia Pambid from Manuel A. Rojas High School in Paco, Manila, Sue Stetzer from J.R. Masterman School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Ron Wagen from John A. Rowland High School in Rowland Heights, California. Second place awards went to Robin Lynn Clemens at Holy Innocence Episcopal School in Atlanta, Georgia, Steve Leifer at Lexington High School in Lexington, Ohio, and Joanne Yao at Galena High School in Reno, Nevada. This videotape shows how the first place winners implemented their entries in the classroom. Hewlett Packard and the Intel Foundation also sponsored the production of this videotape and a booklet that describes all the winning entries in greater detail in the hope that others might adapt and expand some of these ideas to enhance their own teaching. We begin with a contest winner from Jericho Middle School located on Long Island in New York. Hello, my name is Suzanne Jacobson and I'm an eighth grade mathematics teacher from Jericho Middle School. I'd like to tell you how I use project mathematics within my classroom. My own personal favorite video module is the story of Pi. My students thoroughly enjoy watching these videos, especially since they have performed many of the same activities done on the video. It gives them a chance to review their activities, see other students doing the same similar types of activities, as well as reviewing the mathematical concept of pi. In one of these activities, the students discover the formula for the area of a circular disk of radius r. Working in small groups, the students cut a circular disk into equal sectors and put the pieces together in an interlocking fashion to form a figure that looks like a parallelogram with the same area as the disk. Another group divides the disk into thinner slices. The parallelogram they get looks more like a rectangle. They know how to find the area of a rectangle, so the students discover for themselves the formula for the area of a circular disk. You got it. Centimeters squared. Squared, because area. Please. Radius is our. So it's pi r squared. Pi times r times r. And, and then when I show the video, I find, especially with this particular proof, the kids say, we did that. 
I understand it. I could see it. And what's nice about the video is it does it so much more cleaner than the students do. Unwrap half the circumference for reference. Divide the disc into an even number of equal slices and rearrange them to form a sort of parallelogram with the same area as the disc. As we take more and more slices, making them thinner and thinner, the parallelogram becomes more and more like a rectangle with base pi r and altitude r. And the area is pi r squared. What I also like about um, the story of pi is the very next proof for the area of the circle, the triangular proof. I feel that the kids can follow that more readily because they've done one. Here's another method. Divide the disc into concentric rings. Unwrap them and pile them up like this. As we take more and more rings, the stack looks more and more like a right triangle with base 2 pi r and altitude r. Its area, 1 half base times altitude, is pi r squared. I also like about the story of pi is the connection to history. And that somebody just didn't wake up one morning and say, ah, this is the area of a circle. Mm -hmm. so make sure in another activity, students use numbers in a telephone book to obtain an estimate for pi. The teacher rips pages out of a telephone book and passes them out to the students. They take telephone numbers at random and use the last four digits to make a decimal. They choose a pair of numbers, calling one an X value and the other a Y value. They square each of these numbers and add them. The teacher provides a worksheet for recording X squared, Y squared, and X squared plus Y squared. Then the students count how many times x squared plus y squared is less than 1. They divide this number by the total number of pairs chosen to get an approximate value for pi over 4. As a culmination of all their activities on the number pi, the students of Jericho School mark the arrival of spring with a special Pi Day celebration. Festivities include posters, puzzles, problems, poetry, prizes, and, of course, apple pie. The next winning entry comes from California Lutheran University, a private college located at Thousand Oaks in Southern California. This entry was a joint effort by two people. One is Tom Janssens, who has done research in solar astronomy and now teaches both astronomy and mathematics. He worked on this entry together with mathematics teacher Sandy Lofstock. Hi, I'm Sandy Lofstock from California Lutheran University. I've been using the Project Mathematics videotapes for the past year. I started using them in my Math Science Upward Bound class, which is a program that we offer here at, at CLU during the summer. These are high school students above average in ability that come to our campus for five weeks and I've used the sine and cosine videotape, I use the story of pi, I use the theorem of Pythagoras and I got some very good feedback from the students. Now these are high school students, juniors, seniors and some freshmen and I usually have a worksheet accompanies the videotape. I always ask for feedback on the videos from the students. Last Tuesday, in a, uh, preparation for the visit from the crew from Caltech today, uh, we watched the story of Pi. This was in my finite math class. Uh, I asked for immediate feedback and they said, wow. Uh, they loved the animation. They never had seen a math video. Um, they liked the way things happened. They loved music. Uh, they, liked, they noticed the variation in musical types. Uh, they saw why I liked the videos and I asked them what they meant by that and they said you have so much enthusiasm in the classroom and it seems that the videotapes enhance that. It's not, I've never used a straight lecture where I present the material and they just mechanically do the problems. I, there's very active 
interaction with my students and myself, very active learning takes place in my classroom, and the videotapes are one way, another presentation of the material. I reinforce it with worksheets, I reinforce it with experiments like I showed you today with my class, and I just find the videotapes as another method of presentation of the material because the lecture just doesn't work in my classes. Sandy Lofstock and Tom Janssens carry out several classroom activities that relate to project mathematics. One of these has the students discover for themselves how to extend the law of signs from plane trigonometry to spherical trigonometry. This activity and some of the others are described in detail in the booklet that accompanies this videotape. Another activity follows one of the demonstrations shown in the videotape on the story of pi. The students measure the diameter and the circumference of many different circular objects to discover for themselves that the ratio of circumference to diameter is constant. The students enjoy working together in small groups and interacting with each other and with their teachers during these experiments. In yet another activity, the students measure the time between clicks on a rotating bicycle wheel to explore the relation between angular velocity and linear velocity. Project Mathematics videotapes are only one example of a great variety of support materials that helps these teachers capture the attention of their students. Project Mathematics videotapes are used not only nationwide, but also in Canada, Brazil, and many countries overseas. The next winning entry is from the Philippines, more than 7,000 miles away. It was submitted by two teachers, Edna Mangaldan and Alicia Pambid, at Manuel A. Rojas High School in Paco, Manila. Basketball is a popular sport in the Philippines, so the videotape on polynomials has a special attraction for these students because the shape of the ball's path looks like the graph of a quadratic polynomial. We can change the shape of a polynomial graph with high-tech computer graphics or with our own muscles. Here we see an athlete coordinate his actions to shoot a basket from the forecourt. What he's really doing is changing the coefficients of a quadratic polynomial by adjusting the positions of his hands. And it all happens in a split second, polynomial magic. These two teachers developed a hands-on demonstration lesson based on a segment from the video Sines and Cosines Part 1, which shows how a sine curve is generated by plotting the y-coordinate of a point moving on a unit circle. The height of the shadow above or below the shadow of the axle can be measured on a vertical y-axis. When you plot y against the angle t, you get a graph called a sine curve. The teacher uses a transparent circular disk overlaid by radii that can be adjusted like hands of a clock to form various angles. A strip of plastic is used to measure the length of the arc subtended by each angle. This length is transferred to a horizontal x-axis labeled in radians. The vertical height of the point on the boundary of the disk is also measured, and its value is transferred to the chalkboard and plotted as the y-coordinate. This process is repeated several times with different angles.
The teacher has volunteers come forward to make the measurements and plot the points, each using a different angle. Then another student connects the plotted points with a smooth graph, representing the sine curve. The students describe various properties of the sine curve that are revealed by the graph. Next, the students see the animation on the video that repeats the activities just performed and reinforces what they have learned. You get a graph called a sine curve. The number y is called the sine of t. And written this way, y equals sine t. These are them. You can use any variable for t. Then the teacher has the students plot their own graphs of related functions, namely sine x multiplied by various scaling factors. Because this classroom has no writing desks, each student works on a laptop notebook. Students are given ample opportunity to discuss their work with others in the classroom. These scenes reveal that classrooms in the Philippines are subject to the usual distractions. Noise from the outside is quite evident, with other students walking by outdoors and carrying on conversations. Despite these distractions, the students pay close attention and seem eager to respond and take part in the activities. The teachers report that Project Mathematics videotapes have brought a new level of excitement to their classrooms, and have decreased discipline problems. They're very good kids. Next, we go to downtown Philadelphia for a winning entry from the Julia Reynolds Masterman Public School which serves students in grades 5 through 12. This entry was submitted by mathematics teacher Sue Stetzer, who is also head of the mathematics department at Masterman School. After studying sines and cosines in a course on elementary functions, each student was asked to design and produce his or her individual newspaper entitled The Sign of the Times. This innovative project combined mathematics with creative writing and also with art. This really is about newspapers and mathematics. And I know that until last year, none of you had ever even considered writing a newspaper and using mathematics to, to write your stories. But uh, what we did with you last year was we gave you a series of articles to write. One of them was the write-up of the court case. The court case in question was reenacted in class. Now entering the courtroom are Fred Firestone and Nancy Ney, the plaintiff and the defendant in the case of the uncalculated cat caper. All rise for the Honorable Judge Lars Iko. Fred Firestone volunteered to help his neighbor, Nancy Ney, retrieve her cat from a tree. Nancy gave Fred a 50-foot ladder, but Fred slipped off the ladder and was injured. Fred is suing Nancy for medical expenses because the ladder was too short. Expert witnesses gave evidence and were cross-examined. Uh, yes, the angle of the ladder to the ground must be less than 75 degrees in order for it to be stable enough for a person to walk on it. After hearing all the testimony, the judge rendered a verdict in favor of the defendant. Another part of the newspaper project required students to measure the height of the flagpole at the top of Masterman School. 
what you do is you measure how far it is from here to, to me. And then um, you take a measure of the angle. And then you step back a couple of feet, take a measure of another angle, and then you use the trigonometry to compare the functions, or the triangles. And that's how you find out how long, how long the side is. Because what we'll have measured is this length and the angle, and we can find the hypotenuse and then find something else. Okay. Elementary angle, angle yeah. something like that. You can find out this angle right here. I got it. All right. So. Like this is 90. This is 50. So 90 and 50 is 40. around 140. So this is 40 right here. That's 40 right there. Right. So and that's this. 49, 50. Although they worked in teams, each student wrote a separate news article based on this exercise. Then, as an individual project, each student was asked to use the same method to calculate the height of his or her house or apartment building, and to write another newspaper article explaining how and why this height was calculated. Each newspaper also had to include a movie review of Signs and Cosines Part 1, a problem corner, a cartoon, and a personal editorial commenting on the assignment. The stories were interesting and revealed a broad range of creativity. This teacher engages her students by connecting mathematics to activities from real life that the students can relate to. You had to draw the audience in with more than just facts and figures. And uh, so just like the um, project uh, with the tree with the, and the cat in the tree, um, instead of just throwing out numbers, and which we have no real attachment to, if you um, place in the real world and to real situations with the speeding, um, you can see how math um, applies to real life and also uh, it makes it a little more interesting as opposed to just, like you said before, having tests and how some of us do better on projects than on tests. And I just think the, uh, the connection to real things makes it a lot more interesting and easier to learn is another thing. So. And now we go back to Southern California for the next winning entry from John A. Rowland High School in Rowland Heights, a suburban community 20 miles east of Los Angeles. For many years, Rowland High School has had a very active animation program, using thousands of dollars worth of editing equipment donated by Hollywood Studios. During the past four years, mathematics teacher Ron Wagen, shown at the left, has collaborated with two animation teachers, Dave Masters from Warner Brothers Studios on the right, and Dustin Pappas from Roland High School. They guide students in creating animated videos based on mathematical or scientific research projects chosen by the students themselves. Working in teams, students have produced more than 20 animated videos, ranging in length from 15 seconds to 10 minutes. They use computer animation. And as you can see, the ball would land first and the leaf just comes down slowly. Over here. Over here. Right. They use claymation. But then for baseball, we don't want, we don't want a straight shot, right? We want to have like a like right. this shot. Because she's not making eye contact. Right. And they use classical two-dimensional drawings. You were the one that introduced me to the Caltech videos. I mean, you were actually the one that said, let's go, let's go, let's try to use these. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as a mathematics teacher, it, it, I'm somewhat I didn't do it because I understood math. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, I, yeah. I did it because I was invited to, to, to meet some people over at Caltech because they were interested in what we were doing with storytelling and animation. And I asked you to come along because you were going to be a translator for me because I didn't understand right. math. We had 70 kids in that class last year working on animations. We, we came out of that with something like 12 full story animations yeah. based on science or math research. Students that are either coming in from an art background that want to learn math mm -hmm. or a mathematics background that want to communicate 
using this technology and, and the animation language, a very powerful medium. It became obvious to us through working with them that they were grasping the material just in a different way. The textbook wasn't doing it for them, well, I, but they I, were able to understand deep mathematical principles by manipulating the mathematics and also visualizing it. The mathematics of chaos is discussed in this piece of student animation from a story called Chaotic Jack and the Beanstalk. She collaborated with a boy last year who it was in calculus. And here, yeah. here was this young girl who was in barely making it through Algebra 1, but was making a yeah. mathematics video with him right. about nerve cell impulse rates and differential yeah. equations. But he couldn't... And he was a top student. He was a top mathematics yeah. student. Yeah. But he couldn't bring any of those ideas alive visually. Right. And so we put them together. Okay. And she pushed him. And she pushed him. <laughs> she brought all of the mathematical ideas yeah. alive visually yeah. she, and, and so that people like herself yeah. could understand what he was, he was talking. So she literally made a film that she could understand right. about the mathematics of... of it, it ended up being a calculus kind of film, but she, she brought the ideas alive visually in a ways that he couldn't. It was a tough thing because uh, I felt like, uh, you know, pariah in both communities, in the <laughs> arts community, mm -hmm. people were saying, how can you be doing mathematics in an art class? You're, uh, you should be doing art. And I said, we are doing art. We're doing design, composition, uh, all of, you know, drawing, painting, all of the same thing, color theory, all of that is incorporated in what we're doing. But it's the subject matter that changes. And it really, in animation, animation is a tool. It doesn't have to do with subject matter. We can use anything to tell a story. So it didn't matter to me whether the kids were telling stories with fuzzy bunnies mm -hmm. or whether they were doing stories with uh, mathematics. It was the same thing to me. It's the content in, in, in animation. The content doesn't matter. It's the process that they, that they learn. It was kind of a challenge. Can we pull it off? And I think we didn't really pull it off, but the kids pulled the kids it off. The kids pulled it off and, real well. Uh, and we've been just uh, facilitating that process. And well, it's been exciting watching it. Well, last year, the... the Okay, so we got, so we're going to do the point of the roof. And since we're too short to reach up and just measure that with a yardstick. The time lapse, they look. She comes out. Spins yeah, around. she comes this way. He covers the plant, and then he turns over, and it's already grown like halfway. Major funding for this program was provided by the Hewlett Packard Company. <laughs> And the Intel Foundation. For information about the series, write to Project Mathematics, 1 70 Caltech, Pasadena, California, 91125. To order videotapes and workbooks, call the Caltech Bookstore at this toll-free number, 1-800-514-BOOK.